Okay. All right. We are with the one and only Roberto Monaco, one of the best chiropractic speakers, influenciologists. So today, today, guys, to start your week, you're going to have two guys with an accent, but we're both, <laughs> but we're both awesome, and we're going to pump you up, and we want you to have an amazing week. How are you doing, Roberto? Uh, Dr. George. Uh, George I say George, George in Portuguese with my Portuguese accent. Yeah, it's, it's Jorge, Jorge or George? George. Yeah, it's Jorge in Spanish. Yeah, Jorge, yeah. George Campos. Yeah. <laughs> George, Dr. George Campos, what's up, buddy? I'm excited to have a conversation with you today, brother, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I intentionally picked you for Monday because you bring yeah. such good positive energy. So, so little gems when, when you speak that it's like, oh, man, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So yeah. This, is gonna, this is gonna be a hard week for most chiropractors around the planet. Yeah. Um, offices, either they are forced to close down or their offices are voluntarily closed down yeah. or, or the influx has, comp uh, uh, it has decreased. Yeah, because people are scared. They they just want to go sure. outside. They 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 are scared that they might might catch something. So I, I'm gonna jump straight to the point. And um, how do you see this? Like, is this a good opportunity for chiropractic? Chiropractic? Do we right. slow down? You're not a chiropractor, but you are a chiropractic advocate. Perfect. So so, the, so, so I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, and you can get into my story later. Uh, why I do what I do, but. Uh, I personally feel that this is the, the most amazing opportunity for chiropractors uh, because I think now uh, everybody's aware of how important the health is. And I'm telling you before, a lot of people that are not aware, just look at the stats, people dying from heart disease, uh, diabetes, cancer, right and left, opioids, medi so the society is medicated. So that shows you how people are quote unquote are not, uh, they don't think in terms of their health, they're not aware. And I think now they're super aware, why? Because the entire planet shut down. I mean, literally, the entire planet shut down. So that's how aware people were about the health, right? And some people right now, they're, they're walking uh, in confidence, they're walk, walking with, with strength, they're not afraid. Me being one, my wife being one, I have a two and a half year old and I have a seven month old. Um, and there's a ton of people who are scared. Mm -hmm. And I feel like chiropractic and chiropractors who educate, who communicate, who advocate, have an opportunity to help those who are scared and those who, like my family, to kind of like to live their life not only uh, a chiropractic lifestyle, but to make sure that it, to, to, for them to understand that it's not the strength of the virus, it's the strength of the host. Because the virus is the same, it's, the, it's constant. The virus doesn't change. Now, the reason people fall uh, uh, for the coronavirus and all, other diseases is because the, some quote unquote host, right? They're weaker than others. So how do you become stronger? That's the question. How do I protect my health? How do I protect the health of my family? How do I protect the health of my family? You know what I mean? Well, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the whole idea. And I feel like chiropractors who, who understand this and who are able to communicate and articulate that way and educate people, right? They're gonna, this is going to be an amazing opportunity. Now, I understand that some of you listeners right now, legally you cannot practice. Legally, like, hey, lockdown. Right? But I also understand that so many states in America, at least, they listed chiropractic as essential because they know that. So I feel like um, uh, a lot of doctors who did, did not educate their patients consistently in the past, they are paying the price right now. I mean, literally, they're paying mm -hmm. the price right now. And some other doctors who have been educating for the last years, they're being, they still, obviously, their volume are down, obviously, but they still have patients. Right. Can you explain to me why some offices in America right now, this last week, they had new patients. Explain that to me. How come they had new patients coming in last week? Last week. 
Sign yeah. up for care. That's While some patients, you know what I mean, still coming, some others didn't. Well, because um, I feel like in the end of the day, uh, is about education. So chiropractors in general, the industry in general, uh, they don't understand that you know, if you study persuasion, communication science, uh, they talk about attitude, these three levels, attitude shaping, when you shape someone's attitude, uh, attitude changing, when you change someone's attitude, and the third level is attitude reinforcing. So attitude shaping is someone who has no idea what chiropractic is, or they think chiropractic is about back pain, neck pain, they realize, you know what, chiropractic is more than that, it's about uh, function, it's about make sure my body is, is functioning close to, or 100%, right? Right. And then attitude uh, changing, when you go from, I'm not a chiropractic patient, and I become a chiropractic patient, and then the third, the third level is like, okay, and that's the level that, uh, 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 George, George de Campos. <laughs> uh, can I say Dr. George? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can. Yeah. I love it, man. Cause it, I speak little Portuguese with you. Uh, -huh. uh it is, it, it, that's the problem. We don't educate it. You know what I mean? You convert someone, don't educate it. And I feel like if you were, so a couple of tips, one, if your practice is closed right now, you say, Roberto, legally, I cannot practice. Get it. Okay. Now, are you educating your patients eight hours a day? No, for real. Are you, are you, have you developed a library of a hundred videos and publish every day, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn to educate your patients? Because for practice not open that you could do that, right? You could, right. you could be educating. And the answer, most people are not educating. So I feel, and now if you are open, and I don't want to sound harsh or anything. I just feel like it's an opportunity for you. It's an opportunity for us to change the track, change, put the chiropractic in a, in a different track. Um, so, so if you're close, you have an opportunity to educate your patients. Now, if you're open, you still, uh, you still have an opportunity to uh, educate your patients. But also, how do you talk to someone who's the benefit that should come? All right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the first thing that I, I think you, you, you have to step out of it and you have to consider the doctor, the team, and the patient. So the doctor, so what is your, doctor, I'm speaking to you, what's your philosophy? Why do, why, that's not something that I'm going to tell you, you're the doctor. So what is your philosophy? What do you think the role of chiropractic is right now in this quote unquote pandemic and in the future? What mm -hmm. if this happen again? All right? Yeah. Uh, some doctors, they just care about uh, back pain, neck pain. That's it. That's, that's their mindset, which I'm not here to agree or debate. You know what I mean? But so I, I don't, I, I feel like uh, you got to have a really strong foundation right now. Uh, mm -hmm. A philosophical foundation that that's the doctor because the speed of the leader will determine the speed of the pack. So if the doctor doesn't have that psychology, how you expect to manage the psychology of your team there, they might be, they're not doctors. They might be afraid. Right. Right. So that's why it's important for you to the, the psychology. So the, the team and then your patients. Now let's talk about your patients. Uh, and I give a perspective. Uh, are your patients leaving to get food? Most of them uh, are. Yeah. Uh, so is why, why are they going to go get food? They need to eat to survive. They need to right. To survive. Right. Okay, so they survive. So they're they're already taking risks. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, so understand that your patients are already taking risks, and uh, the idea is that now is coming to a chiropractic uh, office is also a risk, of course, right? To be exposed, of course. I, I feel like the doc, uh, the doctor, one should follow the guidelines to minimize the risk, right? So. Every, every office out there should comply with the guidelines as far as uh, social distancing, how they have changed, how they have adopted. I know some doctors, they record videos of like, come to my office, text us in. You're going to allow X amount of people, you know. So, so show your, give, give your patients some certainty, communicate. Obviously, they know the risk, right? But your patients, they, they're going to go out to get milk anyway. And, and I think that's the, the reason people should get adjusted is, is if, uh, if, the, if the whole idea they go to go start to survive, right? 
if you get chiropractic adjustment regularly, is that going to increase or decrease your chance of you to have a strong immune system, a strong body, and survive? Why? Right? Mm -hmm. Survive. Because if you're home stressed out, then the more stressed you are, the, the weaker immune system is. Right? And then, so that, that doesn't, if I'm, if I, if I, so I feel like as a doctor, you've got to be able to communicate and explain that. that is, that's what we do here. You just strengthen your body. That's it. Now, is there a risk? Of course, there's a risk for anything. But, but I feel like um, they're already taking the risks. They're already mm -hmm. going out. They're already going to go to shop. And, and if you, doctor, you communicate that in a way that, look, here's what we did to minimize the risk, and here's why you should, you should come, because at the end of the day, it's not the strength of the virus, it's the strength of your body, the host, you. And, and I, one thing I know for sure, you getting adjusted is going to be stronger than you being at home, sit down on your couch, watch the news, the internet is stressing out, creating more stress. And, make, and, 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 and reducing the, your, 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 your body's ability to fight any disease. I feel like that's the conversation. I mean, that's the conversation. Now, the doctor, though, has to be able to, like, communicate in a way that every single cell is congruent. Now, if the doctor does not believe that, then the doctor doesn't believe that. Then you should not be communicating. I feel it's simple. Yeah, no, I agree 100% with you. And last week... I visited, uh -huh. I visited several chiropractic offices, several. Some of them, they closed down voluntarily. Uh, I went to one that was actually getting a new patient. And, I, and, and I'm not going to forget, the, this was a probably 77, 75-year-old man, new patient. Okay. That when he left, I was there. He said, thank you, doctor, for being open because my chiropractor was closed. And I need chiropractic, so thank you. For wow, that. that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say the doctor's name. I'm not gonna call him out, but he knows who he is. I saw him last last week, and uh, that was really powerful to me to to see that like an old man valuing chiropractic so much. And then I talked to him, to this doctor, and this doctor said, "Listen, I follow all the procedures. Uh, I, I I used to have tables. Now they are way more apart." Yeah, uh, I'm wearing gloves. I put on a mask. Uh, I clean after every patient. So my office is a lot safer than going to the hospital right now. So and if all the offices were closed, that poor old man probably would have gone to a hospital. And and the risk of getting something at the hospital is way higher than getting something in my office. Bingo. And then he, and then, and then he gave the he gave the example of the grocery store. It's like how come you you have fifty hundred people in the grocery store? And they can, and just to get food, what about the same here, but for health, you know, like how, how come they cannot, I mean, it didn't make sense to me. So that's why I stayed open and, and yeah. And, and it was really impressive to, to see him getting a new patient and this person being super grateful for, to this. I love that. Yeah. I, and I heard, and I heard other doctors online, social media, the same idea too. Um, so, so that's why, for example, in this quick story that you shared, thanks so much for sharing, uh, you can identify quickly the site. I don't know the doctor you're talking about, but if you, I can see already his psychology, right? Right. Principal doc, super powerful. No, he's, he's doing uh, something great for his community. So that's what I feel. And, uh, and I don't want to, for the doctors who were not educating their patients before the level that they should, I don't want to make you feel better, but I want, I don't want it to feel bad. Right. Just gotta, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to inspire you. I hope that you can start today to educating your patients, you know? Even if I am not, let's say if I'm close, mm -hmm. let's say, okay, Roberto, already I'm creating content, um, I'm educating my patients uh, online, recording videos, something that I would do personally, I recommend my clients to do, is start doing virtual consultations, you know? Um, teach your patients to do home care, teach your patients to do uh, stretches, uh, teach your patients to, you know, 99% of people working from home, right? Ergonomics at home. So there's other things that you can do, to, of, uh, new ways to build up value for your community. You know what I mean? So that's what I feel a lot of my, our docs are finding different ways to add value just because let's say if your office is closed, now, if you want to take a vacation, then I, I respect that. 
but if, it's, if, if that's not your choice, you say, no, no, I'm in a fight, um, then that's, there's, there's always, when I worked for Tony Robbins, I learned this, there's always something that you can do. Always. There's, yeah. I don't care how bad it is. There's always something that you can do about it. Always. Always. Maybe choose not to do it, but there's always something you can do about it. I had a meeting last Friday with uh, 30 chiropractors from Latin America. Uh, we use Zoom. Yeah. And it just came to me and I said, you know, I could tell you many things, but one thing that I can tell you from the heart is like grab that phone if you're not working right now because oh, down there, they're shut down. The government shut it down, yeah. period. Yeah. So I said, if you're, if you're not able to work, get your office cell phone. You call the patients, not your assistant. You, you are the chiropractor. I know they love the assistant too. And they can say, hey, you know, Mary says hi. But yep. you are the doctor. You call them and just say this. How are you? How's your family doing? Is there anything that I can do for you? Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And that's it. Some people will say, you know what? I'm dying. I want to get checked. Uh, other people are going to say, we miss your adjustment. Other people are going to say, you know, I don't have any food. And, and, and maybe you'll be able to help out with that too. Who knows? But mm -hmm. just like that presence of just giving a phone call and say, how are you? Is there anything that I can do for you? It just speaks volume. I love that. I love and, that. And they've been doing that and they've been, they've been getting really positive response. And, and they, one, one chiropractor told me, dude, after I did that, I felt so loved. Like I didn't know my patients loved me so much. I love that. They I were love so that. happy when I, I called. They told me how much they missed me. They missed adjustments. And, and it was like, he was edified after doing that. And something, um, Dr. George, that I feel, um, so I've been on a chiropractic care now for six years, me and my wife, my two kids. And uh, last, I'm going to stop you for one second because that was my next question. Okay. Why are you so freaking passionate about chiropractic? You're yeah, not a so, chiropractor. Yeah. So the, so no, the no. idea is six <laughs> years ago, I never been to a chiropractor. I never been to, uh, never, I didn't know what chiropractic was. So my background, I'm from Brazil originally. I've been living in America for 25 years. I work at Banco do Brazil, came here, got my MBA in marketing, uh, worked for Tony Robbins, the motivation speaker for six years. I was doing 400 talks a year. After six years, I left. I opened up a company called Influenceology, and life was good. And I was teaching, working with 40 industries. And one day, one of my clients, Gary Gunnison, is a financial planner, calls me up and said, you got to work with chiropractors. I'm like, what is a chiropractor? I really had, that was six years ago, zero clue. Zero. And he goes, well, bro, some of them do talks, should work with them. I'm like, okay, whatever. Forgot about it. And then eventually I got a phone call from a doctor, uh, uh, Dennis Werner, and then I uh, helped him. Then Dr. Chris Zeno, the psycho chiropractor work, which had a, at one point he had like 2,400 patients a week practice in the Houston. And I, and I start coaching him like I was coaching anybody else. And I really helped him. He goes, I want to introduce to our chiropractors. Now in the process, I met my wife and uh, we knew we we're going to get married. And my, and, uh, and my wife, she, she stopped taking birth control pills and her period never came back. Mm. For a year, went to four MDs, no answer. And I remember one day, Dr. Zeno came to San Diego. I was living in San Diego back in the day. And he said, hey, I, I told him, hey, man, um, my wife was going through these issues. And he goes, go see a chiropractor. So we went to see Dr. Ryan Hummel, San Diego, California, X-ray, and we found a big subluxation in her lower back. She lost the, the curve in her neck. And then we start care. And a year passed by, two years passed by, almost three years in care. Her period never came back. Um, and then we all, and what's so many times we were like, des like my wife was crying in the evening, desperate. And uh, what kept us going to chiropractic was. I was reviewing all the stocks from chiropractors because they used to, set, to send me dinner, the doctor, stress talks, patient orientation classes. And every talk that I was reviewing, Dr. George, I saw a story about someone who couldn't get pregnant, got pregnant. Someone who didn't have her period, got her period. And I was like, and I used to tell my wife, like, look, um, I, I'm, I'm hearing this story from hundreds of different chiros. Right. They don't even know that we are going through this and I even I remember telling my wife, like, they cannot all be lying to me. 
you know? Right. And because it felt weird, right? Here's I'm, I'm going through a personal issue and I have all these doctors and I remember uh, three and a half years ago, uh, Christmas morning, I wake up. I'm in San Francisco. My mom from Brazil was here visiting. It was me, my mom, her mom. My wife is sleeping. She wakes up, goes to the bathroom, opens the door, comes to me crying, give my a hug. She goes, I got my period. And I'm like, are you sure, honey? She goes, I'm sure. And then fast forward, we, we, got prag- uh, we got pregnant. Fast forward, we had a natural birth in San Diego because all my chiropractic friends say, hey, man, you got to watch a movie the business of being born by the way if you have not watched it go to netflix and watch it. it's about natural Powerful. birth Powerful. amazing and then uh and, and uh, sophia was born and here's what's crazy about it why right? sophia was born she was born in san diego natural birth at 10 14 p.m in the evening and in california law when you're born you can spend 12 hours in a birth center so after 12 hours either your baby is healthy you go home or you go to the hospital and Sophia was born at 10 uh, in the evening and she couldn't breathe properly. And the true midwife nurse said she has this, I think, ambiotic fluid stuck in her lung. She's not breathing. And uh, we, they attach a, a, mach, a machine to monitor her, her breathing. And it was 5 a.m. I literally got my phone, 5 a.m. Uh, and I say, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text Dr. Ryan Hummel. By the way, I have pictures of the whole story is amazing. So I said, hey, buddy, are you, are you awake? Can you come here in the birth center? And he said, I'm waiting for the call. And he came. Sophia is a couple hours you know, old. He put my baby down, uh, touched her neck. So like, yeah, she's so excited. Adjust her once, wet it. Adjust her twice. And he looked at my wife, she's, she's clear, and gave my baby, Sophia, to my wife in like a movie. Dr. George, like a movie. Sophia goes like this, goes, and threw up the biotic foot that stuck in her lungs. And she gave the most beautiful baby cry. I look at Dr. Ryan Hummel, I grown up man, with tears come down his face. He said, did you see the power of the innate? And I'm like, Holy shit, you know, that's what I said. And he laughed. And within half an hour, her breathing normalized. Her oxygen levels normalized. So the two midwife nurses came in the room and said, what happened, what happened, what happened? I said, well, my chiropractor came in, detected subluxation, adjust her, she threw up, she's fine. And they go, no, what really happened? It's like, that's what happens, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then well, the crazy part was like, so at that morning, 10 a.m., we went home. And then uh, two days later, I'm thinking about my journey the last four years, right? And here's, the cra- this, here's why, why I'm talking to you today. So, so first I had the issue about my wife didn't get her period back. Then we had a natural birth. Then my car was there for us, support us. Literally changed the course of her life. I have a two and a half year old, beautiful Cairo baby, right? Unreal. And now here's the crazy part. When, uh, when we did the natural birth in San Diego, we took an eight-week class. So every Wednesday evening, you used to go to class, and there's 10 couples. 10 couples who didn't want to go to the traditional medical system. They say, I want something natural, right? right. They want a natural birth center, San Diego, California. And out of 10 couples who had one dad, one mom, and one baby being adjusted, which was my family. And the question is, why? People didn't know. People didn't know. So while I'm not being a chiropractor, uh, I've been doing public speaking presentation training for many years, since 2002. So my mission, what I love to do, I love, love to do, is to help chiropractors to become amazing communicators so that they can take the chiropractic master community. It's that simple. I have one agenda with chiropractic. That's it. I want to make sure all my clients become amazing communicators so they can do uh, dinner, the doctor, stress talk, patient orientation class, one-on-one video, Facebook live, YouTube, whatever they go and they can speak not to inform as much as to transform people from not chiropractic patients into chiropractic patients so they can live the chiropractic lifestyle. So that's my belief system is. And I feel like so many chiros nowadays, 
so many they they wanna they 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 they, they are trying to do whatever everything but communicate right they, they don't want to be they don't want to be leading and i and i feel like leadership if look man leadership you got to be the one advocating telling the story creating the vision communicate with your patients and it's really hard to do it if you uh <laughs> if you don't if you don't want to if you don't want to speak it's just hard to to become a leader uh, leadership and speaking they're, they're like this Hi, right? like this there right. and so that's my my agenda that's why i do what i do i develop the car speaking company the car speaking club i have an events for cars so that's it that's my uh, that's my what my passion is and it's a beautiful beautiful passion and and we met here at sherman because yeah. you you came to to teach one of your your courses here yeah people people were Super great for them and, and, and fascinated. Actually, I, I got to be honest with you. I talked to to my direct boss and 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 I told her I'm gonna interview Dr. Monaco, and she was super excited. It's like the guy's amazing. You gotta you, you gotta oh, interview him. And she also met you that day. She didn't know you before, so so that's that's the influence that you have uh, in people. Thank you, thank you uh, so much. My storytelling is a lot better too. Uh, ah, I, I am a. I am a chiropractor and, and I usually talk about chiropractic, but also I have a separate podcast just to inspire people. Love and, that. And I, and I did an interview uh, using your, your story mode and I got about 3,500 organic uh, views. Nice, on, nice, brother. On the first three days. I love that. I love that. Yeah, so, I feel like... That's, your I, stuff works. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. The idea... The idea, I, I personally feel, this is my belief, that um, chiropractors should be the primary doctors in their communities, you know? I do feel there's a place for traditional medicine, obviously, I do. I'm not the kind of a guy who, I know some carlos because a lot of carlos throughout their journey, throughout their profession, they have been kind of like the medical system, they have, they have like manipulated them, try to control their image, you know what I mean? So I feel for, I really understand sometimes Kairos, they're angry, you know what I mean? They're like to the system because they're being, it's almost like, a, I understand that. Um, but I feel like uh, <laughs> I'm so deep with Kairos, man. Kairos are healers, man. They are yeah. uh, the, the, the level of knowledge that they have, the impact they have how they see health. And I personally feel that it's time for Kairos to own the power. You see, in your speaking, I talk about owning your power when you're from the room, you own it, not from an egotistical point of view, like you're trying to show off your skills. Yeah. No, no, because it's just a leadership, right? If I go to a class, for example, as a student, I want to be led by the structure to a better to, to achieve better outcomes right yeah. so and so the same thing when your car you're speaking presenting uh doing a webinar doing a face do a podcast whatever you're doing people want to be led by you so own that power it's time for us to own the power and i think that's an amazing opportunity i i really truly feel that while uh for some so many doctors right now because they cannot practice it's painful i get it and maybe they are down hope maybe they they cannot see next month because like man I have to get a loan to, to keep my office open. I understand that the pain, uh, and I'm sorry for going through that. Um, but I can tell you that I personally feel is the biggest opportunity for chiropractic because one thing people know they, they don't want to be at risk again. You know what I mean? They don't want to be the the two three percent. They're like man I'm a risk. I mean literally, and they don't and and now in your communication, in your presentation, one-on-one, -on -one, doctor's reports, is a chance for you to educate people. Uh, I wanna share a quick story with you that happens uh, back in 2008, 2009. I was, I, was, uh, uh, I was working at that time with the mortgage industry, had a ton of uh, mortgage clients. This is way before chiropractic. And uh, so mortgage brokers, loan officers, they uh, they go and do talks for real estate agents and for builders and financial planners. So I had like a lot of clients. 
So when the mortgage meltdown crash, I literally had clients who were making a hundred, two hundred thousand a month mm-hmm. disappear. You know, you know, is which is different than oh, I cannot practice for a month. When I say disappear, I'm saying the company closed. There's no company, bankrupts. Like, so be oh, there's no company. Yeah, there's no company. And then I'm gonna call another company. Oh, the other company is gonna work for it's going too. So it's really weird. It was really weird environment. So here's what I learned, and I, I hope to share something, a lesson from the other industry to chiropractors here. The statistics might not be 100% accurate here, but it's just kind of like a framework. So let's say out of 100 chiros, uh, 100 loan officers, right? mm-hmm. 50% of them just quit. They'll be like, done. Yeah. Done. I'm going to do sell something, different career, go back to school. They're just like, it's too hard. I mean, literally. And then you had the remaining 50. Out of the 50, between five to 10, they said, um, the way they think about it is like, look, this suck. I lost my job, I gotta find another job. I lost my income for a while but I'm gonna make one decision, just one decision. And the decision that I'm gonna make right now is that by the time it's done, I'm gonna be better. Mm-hmm. And they literally made a decision. It's like, dude, I'm gonna, like a pit bull, uh, I'm gonna lock in my jaws, I'm gonna stay in this industry, and by the time I'm done, I'm gonna be become better. And you know what happens? Those, let's call 10%, when the market eventually turned around, now they got all the market share of the people who left. Man, and, that, and now like, let's say metaphorically speaking, if they're making 100,000 a month, now they're making 300, I mean, it's crazy, right? Crazy. Mm-hmm. Now the 40% who stay, but I didn't make a decision, they struggle for years because those are the one in reactive mode. They'd be like, wow, I want to see what happens. There's nothing that I can do about anyway. Uh, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to yeah. take this time to cruise. And that's the last one that I want to share with you. I hope that as a doctor, regardless where you listen to us right now, if you listen to us in Argentina, Chile, Brazil, uh, Puerto Rico, Spain, America, doesn't matter. I, Australia, is that you can make the decision. You'll be like, you know what? I want to make a decision because, I mean, today, as we recorded this, they're already talking about a plan to reopen the country right, here, here in America. They're already talking about it. Right. So you know it's coming. You know, you know it's coming. It's not going to be a week or two weeks. You know it's going to ha- happen soon. And then when that happens, are you going to be the, the fat athlete on the NBA who got to go start working and carrying 30 new – I want to lose the weight? 30 pounds. So the season going to restart, right? They're going to start playing basketball again. But dude, guess what? I got 30 pounds during the lockdown. Can't play. Or you're going to be that guy who's doing push-ups, working out at home, and they can be like ready to go. So I hope that at Cairo, you're ready to go. It'll be like, and you have a new mindset. I, uh, Dr. George, I, I, know, I was telling my wife, I'm working way harder the last month since I saw your Sherman was four weeks ago, yep. I'm working harder now than before and I'm not traveling. It's like, how is that possible? <laughs> uh, I mean, literally Saturday, Sunday, did a virtual event for 170 practices with Dr. Steve Franson from Remarkable Practice uh, two weekends ago. I mean, crazy. I'm working harder than when I have to travel all over it's a, because I made a decision. I'm like, look, by the time it's done, Everything we do is going to be better. I made a decision. I made a decision when, when, when the whole thing started, lockdown started four weeks ago, and I'm like, what can I learn from the 2000, 2009 crisis? What can I learn? I'm like, right. oh, I remember. They made it, I made a decision already. It was like, okay, done. Just done. So I hope that I inspire you. Yeah, as recent to us, like, you know what? It's time for me to step up. So, Yeah, thank you so much. And- and I think you, you asked the right question. Quite a few people are in the why me mode. Why this happened? Why, why, why? Instead of what can I learn from this? Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. When you have that mentality, okay, this sucks, but what can I learn from it? What, yeah. Where's the lesson? Where's the growth? 
Mm -hmm. It's hard to see it. It's hard to see it when you're concerned. Hard to see it. You know, how am I going to pay for this? How is this? How is yeah. my office going to survive? But when you enter that mode, like you said, like the guys, the guys like pit, pit bulls, you know, like log yeah, in, yeah. Awesome. let's go, time to fight. Uh, I agree 100% with you, 100% yeah. with you. And, and, and if I can rescue anything from this interview, yeah. is that you reminded me that important question. What yeah. can I learn from this? Yeah. So the idea, uh, when, I, when I wake up in the morning, I, I open my eyes, I have this word fight. And I know you were uh, MMA. Uh, you're MMA fighter too, or just judge? You both? I, I was gonna do it, but I got my arm snapped in half. Uh, oh. I didn't like the armbar. <laughs> so, so I mean, so that that's let's talk about because I love MMA and I love. Uh, <laughs> I love, we can we can talk about we can use metaphors. So that's the word, man. You fight, and a fighter fights until <laughs> is being choked, still fighting, like and you know, fighting until it's, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, so that so I feel like uh, and I and I want to have empathy here too because different doctors they're in different uh, stages, you know. Uh, some have less, some like desperate. So I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry. You're going if you're the ones in the desperation mode. So I'm sorry. I'm really I feel for you. So you do whatever you gotta do to cry, to go to get pissed, to kick the trash, if you're not, right? It's okay, it's okay to be pissed, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be depressed, it's okay, it's totally okay, other people do it. But at one point, at one point, you're gonna be like, all right, that's enough, all right? Once you, once you dealt that emotion, at one point, like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna give up, like, all right, that's it? Or you'll be like, are you going to fight? So um, one of the people I always, when I worked for Tony Robbins for six years, they always ask me, what is the biggest lessons you learn? Right? Because I was six years working for Tony Robbins. And there's, there's a couple lessons that I learned, um, two specifically. One is in the power of speaking and communication. Uh, one time Tony said, did that training, he said, look, if I lose everything that I have, islands, planes, everything, I'll build everything back up again with the power of influence, the power of communication. I'm like, oh, I got it. Because that's how we build it, right? Especially nowadays, you have, you have technology. I mean, literally, you can broadcast your message all day long, 24-7. Yeah. Right? And that, so that's one last. The second last one I share is this, is that once you... Deal with your emotions. You'll be like, ah, oh, man, I don't like it. Um, sucks. Uh, <laughs> whatever you want to deal with it. In the end of the day, it comes down to three decisions. Number one, where are you focusing on? And that's something that's crazy because if you spend a lot of time on social media and, and reading conspiracy therapy, conspiracy theory and all this stuff, eventually it's like getting mad and mad and mad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then... So the first question is, what I'm focusing on? Number two, what does that mean? Number three, what I'm gonna do, all right? What I'm focusing on, what does that mean I'm gonna do? So let's say I spend a, I spend a couple hours on how bad things are, how many people are dying, conspiracy theory, that's my focus on, what does that mean? Man, that means that the, it's extremely bad, it's getting worse and the world's gonna end. What I'm gonna do, nothing, all right? Yeah. I, or I have no power to do anything. So what I'm going to focus on, wake up in the morning, serve my patients. Even though I cannot adjust them, I'm going to serve them. I'm going to pick okay. up the phone and call. What does that mean? I'm a leader. I'm a health leader. I lead people. All right? Just because I cannot adjust doesn't mean I cannot lead them. I can't lead them right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to record video. I'm going to reach out. This is always something we can do. So whatever you focus on, expand. So what, what, day to day, what are you focusing on? What does that mean? Them because some of you might be like, well, I understand, but if you steal your, the meaning, the meaning that you give to the whole thing, the meaning is not empowering, you're not going to take massive action. The doing part is not going to follow through. So you actually, as a leader, and it's hard, you got to find the positive meaning for you. 
And I know it's not easy. You don't say it's easy. But it, because the moment you like a people like uh, you latch it, ah, I get it. That's what this whole ordeal means to me, to my future. Ah, I get it. It's an opportunity for me to reinvent myself. It's an opportunity for me to serve more people. It's an opportunity for me to educating better my patients because I wasn't educating before. Whatever. Once you find this empowering meaning that empowers you to become a better leader, then you take massive action. You go. Yeah. It's the stuff you can control anyway. So I feel like now, Monday, the April 13th, they are talking about reopening country the next couple months, couple weeks. So we know it's coming. So we still have time. Focus, focus, focus. And, and focus on your lessons too, right? What you learn here so yeah. they don't, don't repeat again. So Yeah, I agree. I, I have learned asking that question, what can I learn from this? Yeah, I, I saw a lot of mistakes that I've done in the past and it ain't happening again. Mm -hmm. ain't yeah. Happening again. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be a better person after this for sure. So, well, I mean, time is running up. It, it's been almost an hour. Uh, that, that was awesome. That was amazing. Uh, I understand why people like you so much and then they enjoy your, your product because again, I, I, I learned what you taught me. I used it and it was really cool to see the, the, the results. Like, like you said, I wasn't informing anymore. I was, yeah. I was transforming. And, oh, I love that. And I when people that. get that connection with you, it's totally a, a game changer. So thank you so much for everything thank that you're so doing. Much, for the brother. Appreciate that. Thanks so much for having your show today. Thank you. And you have a wonderful week, Roberto. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> Perfect, amigo.